Hi all. In this video, let's learn about objects in JavaScript. So some of the basic concepts related to the object and useful concepts to work with objects. So let's uh, look one by one. So what are objects? So earlier we may have seen some primitive data types like number and string. So here we are going to deal with the data with a single variable and single value. So these type of things are known as a primitive data types, primitive values. So only single values can be handled with within a single variable. So what if, if you want a collection of various data, a complex entity, so then we need an object. So complex entity in sense, if you have an employee, so that's if employee is a variable. So if you want to keep uh, some information related to the employee, like his name, age, salary, everything. So that you, you this, this is a complex data. So now with the primitive data types like string and boolean, we can't achieve that. So that's the reason we have objects. So in, within this object, you can store the type of complex data. So that's the reason we have objects. So these are the two ways you can create an object. So these two are the null objects, like you have just defined an object. So uh, this, the, this is an empty object. It doesn't do anything. So if you want to add some more properties, so this is how it looks. So you have a, in an object, you will be having the properties. So these are properties, name, age, or the properties. Within this, name is a key. An object is nothing but a key value pair. Name is a key and Suresh is a value. Name is a key and Suresh is a value. Age is a key, 31 is a value. So in an object, you will be having properties, basically. These properties are key value paired. And also one, one of the important point is, if you declare any of the key, the property key is automatically converted into strings. So even if you give like this, internally that name will be converted into string like this. So this is automatically done by the JavaScript internally. So overall, this is an object. Now you, you will be considering user as an object. So what are the basic operations we can do in an, in an object? So the first operation is to access a property in an object. So user is an object we know. So if you want to access the name, only the name in this object, so this is how you're going to access user dot name. Then you will be getting Suresh as a value. So user object dot key name, property key. Then you will be getting the property value name. So that, that is how uh, you're going to access the object properties. So this type of accessing is known as a dot notation. So the second things you can do is you can add the properties into your object. So adding the properties means just you can keep user is our object dot some property. So is admin is not available in this object. So dot is admin is equal to true. Now you, you have added one more property to the existing object. Now the object will have not only these two properties, it will also have, if you print the user here, so now it will have not only the name and age, now we also, it will have, it will also have name, name, key, age, and is admin. So you'll be having all these keys with their respective values as well. So in this way, you can add a property to the object. And one more thing is you can delete the properties as well. So delete the operation, you need to use a delete keyword and mention the property key. So user.h. So after this, if you print the user object, the age property would be removed. If you print the user object, now you'll be, you don't have this age because you have deleted the user.h. If the properties exist, then this delete operator will delete that property and it will return true. If you give a property which is not exist, like age two, this is this property is not exist. So when you try to delete user dot age two, this property is not present in this user object. Then it will return false because you you don't have this property. So that's the reason delete operation can't be performed on this property. So it returned false. So these are the three basic operations we'll be performing on an object. So such that you will be adding, you'll be uh, you'll be accessing the properties, you'll be adding the properties, you can delete the properties. So these are the basic operations we'll be performing in an object. 
so also if you, sometimes you may have a multi word property name for example you have a like score so this is a property key so property key how to access this property key so for example you know user dot name so if you add like this you will be getting suresh so the value in this suresh so how you are going to access the like score so this is a multi word property key so if you try to access this type of properties with like this so like likes code so if you try to access like this javascript will throw an error because it it is a dot notation and you are trying to access user dot likes so it will try to search likes properties exist or not after that it you have given a space and code it don't uh, javascript don't know about this property so that's the reason if you have any of the property names with a multi word then the dot notation of accessing the property will not work that's the reason we need to go with the square brackets so here now you need to give the square square braces so this is how you are going to access the properties if you have any property multi word properties like this then this is how you need to access the properties so simply i uh, will let when to use a dot notation and when to use a bracket notation so we can simply remember in this way so if you have any valid so if you have any valid variable names so if if the properties consists of a valid things like it it contains no spaces no digits and if uh, the variables will not start with any special cases then the dot notation is perfectly fits in that type of objects so if you have an object property key with the spaces and special keywords so then you need to go with the square notation of accessing so square bracket notation so this is a small thing so if if you have a valid property names then you go with the dot notation if you have some spaces like this spaces or special characters or if a property starts with a digit so for example if you if you you can also create a property like this so if any of the property starts with the digits also it's good to go with the square notation so these are some of the notation how to access the differences between the dot notation and the square bracket notation as well so there are uh, property name limitations if you observe the we have a variable name limitation so for example you should not use the reserved words so for example you can't use written is equal to 10 like this so this is not valid one because written is a reserved word for the javascript you can't use written as a variable name but whereas coming to the object there is no such a restriction so you can use any of the property names for example you have a username like this and in this username you can use let as one of the property name so this is not wrong so you can use written as one of the property name so you can use all the reserved word words also here so you, got, you can also use constant 30 now you can add all this user dot let user dot written user dot constant and it will return the sum it means while you are using there is a property name there is no limitation you can also use the reserved words of javascript javascript it's not a limitation so let's now understand about in operator so what is the purpose and what is the usage of this in operator for example if you want to find out any of the properties present in the object or not so then this in operator will help us so key the syntax is you need to give the key name in a double quotation in object name for example if i say age in user so user is a object and i am asking whether age property is present in the user object or not if it is present it will return true and i am asking blah blah so this key is present in the user object or not then as it is not present it will return false so in operator the left hand side you need to have the property name so that should be given in the double quotes so this will help us uh, why why we need this in operator means before you are performing any operation on any of the object it's better to understand whether the property is present or not for that purpose you can use this in operator or also to compare two uh, operators also you can use this in operator so this in operator helps us whether to find a particular property is present in an object or not for that purpose we can use this in operator coming to a loop we have a special loop to loop through the object so 
you have this for in loop so this is a special loop we can use this loop throughout the object and you can extract all the properties and its values so the syntax is like this so for we have a for loop let and i have used a property in object name so now in this property you'll be having all the key value names so if you print anything like this you'll be getting all the key keys that are ex exist in this object if you want the values you can do like this so this is the way like for in is for in is the best loop and that is a special loop we have so that you can walk in all the keys in an object so usually for any of the objects if you want to loop through the keys and its values each and every value for any of the manipulations uh, the best suggestion loop is for in loop so the next uh, part is like objects when you are trying to pass objects you objects are passed by reference so for example here dog is an object it has two properties and animal is a function so now i will print the dog dog method dog object so you will you have two properties so two properties like name and object would be printed for you okay so if you call animal i am calling a animal function and passing the dog reference so here the when you trying to pass objects to another functions so these objects are passed by reference it means you are passing the the reference means the address so now here the direct original object would be modified so now i am adding one more property d dot size here d and dog both are referring to the same object so that's the reason if you add one more property here and if you print the dog so now you are out of this function now if you print you will be getting the three properties three property values name color and size all these three properties would be printed after calling this function because you have passed the dog object and this dog object is passed by reference it means it will manipulate on the direct dog object so now d and dog would be referring to the same object so that's the reason if any change happened to the d if it adds any property that would be reflected back to the dog so this is uh, we need to understand why you are passing any of the objects to any of the function these objects are passed by reference so that's the reason if you add or delete or anything if you do the, to this object so that would be reflected to the original object as well that thing we need to keep in mind so coming to the optional chain so this is the part if you have any non existing property so for example uh, you have a user and address this is a nested object user is an object in that object you have another object called address so most of the time these objects will be getting from the back end so for example uh, a user may have stored uh, address value sometimes uh, if address value is not an uh, mandatory value so users may not store this value so in that case if you try to access user dot address dot state if the users have address he, if he inputs the address and street name then you will be getting its value will get its value exact value if some of the users if they feel this address value if you give this address and street values as optional values and if they have not provided those values it means for them these values are not there and if you try to access user dot address dot street then as you don't have the address object itself and you're trying to access the address dot street then you will be getting an undefined errors because user don't have an address object in that case you're trying to access its street object because as this is undefined you're trying to access undefined dot street so that's the reason you will be getting an error here so we will be getting an uh, cannot read uh, so usually we will be getting this type of errors cannot read a property of undefined so usually we will be getting this type of errors so to avoid this type of errors we have this optional chaining so what you need to do is so even if the user is having that address or not so use this question mark dot this is an optional chaining operator user question mark address so if you do like this and if you again use this question mark and straight like this so what happens here is now it will check 
user if the user object is present and if and only if the address is present for him then only it will check the straight if the address is not present it will come out it will not throw this type of uh, cannot read a uh, property and different errors so this is very much useful optional chaining so instead of writing big code not only not only without using this optional chaining also you can do like you need to verify whether a user is present so if it is not equal to undefined or it, it is not equal to null then again you need to check again you need to check user dot address okay if this is not equal to undefined or null then you if you can keep to access a straight but this is an a duplication of the code and this is a, a big code instead of that you can just keep this optional chaining operator so that uh, it, this will also do internalize this part but this code will be clean and neat this would be more readable so if the address is present then only you will try to access a straight property if not it comes out of it will not throw any errors like this so these are some of the basic points regarding the objects in javascript and some of the useful uh, points also i have discussed regarding objects so hope you like the video thanks for watching please subscribe for more videos